Got some patch notes this morning, and they're kind of surprising ones. If you actually take a look at this here, you can see we have a Season 12 Battle Pass, which has some minor updates. It's not the major update. I would expect the major update in a couple more months. Those are quarterly. We've already had the last quarterly one on the last update. So because of that, we still have a couple more months to the next major update. But in this minor update that will be arriving, it looks like April 12th by, you know, the morning for most people. This this will be arriving the day prior for people on the Oceania, you know, and uh, the Asia side of things. Uh, this update is going to feature a few targeted feature updates specifically targeted around feedback from players. For instance, if you look at this one here, the feature update, Battleground Q cancellation penalty. There are a few absolute no lives that all they do is sit in the game and literally Q and then cancel the Battleground all day long. That's all they do. Sit there in queue and cancel just to ruin the game for other people. They actually specifically call this out right here. They can see this. People will sit there and actively attempting to throw it by continually canceling the match screen. We know this is a thing because if you're live streaming, you're trying to get into a battleground match or something, uh, at the occasion, you'll sit there for an hour and it's obvious somebody is just seeing they're re-queuing in the same matches you haven't canceling it just to stop you from being able to do your battlegrounds, which is highly annoying um, for a lot of people because it's affecting everyone, not just the person they're trolling. So because of that, they actually have have a five minute penalty for this and they say they're going to continue to look at this and if this five minute penalty is not enough then they're going to deal with this but effectively these this will stop people from actively being able to troll because as it stands you can literally just go into pvp q cancel q right back in q cancel and just stop people from going into pvp entirely which is basically incredibly annoying now, if you look at this here, Battleground Matchmaking Optimizations. This is where we start to get into the stuff that the people are going to want to see. The Battleground Matchmaking has been further optimized to create evenly matched teams more consistently. Now, currently in the game, there's, oh, how to put it, uh, a little bit of feedback that the matchmaking is quite terrible. Uh, basically, you'll have multiple 7K wells on the same team. You have eight monks on the same team, and then the other team just gets shafted. The matchmaking doesn't seem like there's literally anything other than just like they flip a coin to see what team you're going to be on, and there's not any way of trying to balance those teams, at least not that I can notice. Okay, and so for that reason, uh, a significant amount of feedback they've been receiving basically since the launch of the game, especially now that we have even more PVPers in the Diablo Partner Program that are focused on the PVP side of things, they're getting a lot of negative feedback about the matchmaking system. Rightfully so, by the way, because the matchmaking system is effectively garbage. So because of that, they are trying to focus on that. And they are, if we read the developer's notes, continue to uh, identify ways to improve matchmaking experience. We focus this on update around improving match finding with the addition of Q dodging penalties and better matchmaking. This right here is going to be your key point. Better matchmaking. We believe that players should experience higher quality battleground matches going forward. We will, of course, continue the uh, review and pursue. You're going to see that line continue the review and pursue further changes, etc. So it kind of like the same thing with the 65 deaths they added in the game. They're slowly trying to make PvP a better experience. Um, I think this is probably going to be well received if the matchmaking is actually better because this is a highly requested change. This is something that directly people are asking for. In fact, there's more interesting ones that people have been directly asking for within these patches. We take a look at this here. Paragon updates. Seven day cooldown, been removed. You can now reset your Paragon points literally for free at any time. It didn't make sense their logic before. They said in order for it to really balancing the matter, well, when you can max out multiple trees, balancing really isn't the issue. So being able to have the Paragon points reset at any time, especially with the class change thing, it's kind of nice because now you don't have to save your seven day reset if that's what you were going to do. I don't think many people were resetting this all, uh, all the time anyway. And now that we've gotten into the point where there's enough points, unless they're planning to put out more Paragon trees, like, there's not, there's just not really an issue with letting people reset the Paragon trees. It's not unbalanced. It's not unbroken. People aren't going to be resetting this and then quickly min-maxing their build. Oh no, he got the reset. Like that's just not really a thing. And as if you actually look at the points here, you can see after analyzing player behavior and given our desire to equip players with increased flexibility, we conclude that letting players reallocate their points will be more fun while still retaining balance. It retains balance because stopping people from swapping their Paragon points wasn't balancing jack shit literally anyway. So they realize this. Thank you. Props for realizing that. One other thing here, if you scroll down, another fix. A cursed towers. If a clan owns two towers and attempts to challenge the third tower, they must choose one of their current towers to give up if they win ownership of the third tower via PvP match. If a challenging clan loses the PvP match, they will retain their two original towers. So effectively, what this allows you to do is almost swap out the tower. Let's say you have one bad tower, one good tower. You could try the fight for another second good tower and sack the one that you don't like. And if you lose, you're, well, I have the other one anyway. I'm 50-50 on this because um, I feel like 
you could you could more or less use this to continually cycle out the second tower and just uh, take away the tower from the clan that you don't like the most. At the other point, I do understand that is sort of the point of the cursed towers. You are supposed to actively be basically trolling or fighting the other clans for your towers. Like, I think they put this whole tower thing, especially by making some of them better than others, especially in things like PvP, they put this as a way for clans to basically bicker and fight over each other over these towers. And in the meantime, all the players that are just playing it for rewards get the rewards and they get cursed gear, etc. So I don't hate this change, but I uh, I do believe that the accursed towers are going to cause drama, just like the clan right of exile system is going to cause drama. And the way I handle all this stuff in this day and age is I just don't deal with literally any of it. I don't have it. I don't partake in any of the clan decisions. I'm just in a random clan shout to Eternos to let me join in order to get footage in it. I don't have problems with anyone on my server. I actually actively like basically everyone on my server and I've talked to people from more or less every clan. Even the people that are, for whatever reason, I guess, have fight with other people don't really fight with me. And I like the majority of the people on my server. So I don't really have um, the issue related to clans as much. But I can tell you that for the people running the clans, etc., this whole accursed clan tower system is probably going to cause um, a significant significant amount of effort or drama associated around it. And I do think the Accursed Towers uh, were both hit and miss because people really like the Accursed Tower bonus. People like the PVE side of it, but the PVP side of it, only 10 people can partake in. There's more Rite of Exile drama, etc. So it depends upon how you feel about how that subsection of the game, there is a subsection of people that really enjoy that side of the game. So maybe it's just not for me. I'm willing to uh, put some leniency into that. Maybe it's just isn't my, I don't really like the clan organizational side of things. And it's much nicer for me in this day and age not having to worry about all of that. So they looked at this leaving clan cooldown thing. Speaking of clan drama, uh, this is a good segue into this because the previous implementation was quite poor. Basically, the way they did is you could join any clan at any time, which basically makes the whole benefit of the Immortals being able to fight, you know, target which Shadow Clan they're going to fight with their teams completely irrelevant because the Shadows could swap clans literally any second up to the last battle, and that didn't really make any sense. So they're, they are changing that, and we can see what changes they're doing in this here. If player leaves a clan, they will be unable to participate in the Cursed Towers PvP match, and there was other issues related to the towers with the clan swapping Challenge of the Immortal, Rite of the Exile, and Shadow War for the remainder of the activity's weekly cycle. This is a fine enough fix, in my opinion. Can still receive their personal rewards from participating in Cursed Towers PvE match with their new clan, but will not contribute to that clan's Cursed Shard total. This is fair, too. I'm cool with the people receiving their personal rewards, as long as this isn't abusable, where you hop from clan to clan to clan and you get three chests literally every time and the resets or something, you could get million chests in a week, kind of like clan boss hopping from Raid Shadow Legends back in the day. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think that's the case, though. Um, it should be fine. Cannot be appointed as a clan leader for the remainder of the current week cycle. That's fine as well. I'm not, I am not. I don't have an issue with any of these. This should uh, fix, essentially, the issue we have of people swapping clans uh, for more or less, I wouldn't say toxic reasons, but min-maxing that probably shouldn't be in the game um, is being fixed. So, shout out to that. So far, we've got pretty much all Ws in terms of specifically targeting like plot holes in the game seems to be mostly what this update is about here moving on to purification shards so if you don't know what this is this is the stuff that allows you to reroll basically like reforge stones your cursed gear there's an argument to be made that you don't get enough of these they seem to agree because the daily amount of this has been increased from your rewards chest so you'll be receiving more of these per day how many don't know we'll have to see purification shards have been added to the hilt vendors inventory so you can now be purchasing more of these as well that's good we're going to need a large amount of these um especially because this new cursed gear is supposed to be the new like best gear we're getting more of it than we are invocations and we're going to be needing to re-roll it all the time if you expect us to be able to keep our set uh so that's a little unfortunate i was under the impression that um it was going to be a slightly different where you like unlock a new one and then you can save it or something but it's basically reforged stones so we need lots of them uh, i know this for fact because I've used hundreds of reforged stones. So speaking of reforged stones, Hydras summoned by the wildfire set have increased target detection. Maybe, I, don't, I feel like Hydras still maybe not the best one, but all right. Empowered and Collector's Battle Pass reward increase. Here's where we get to something interesting. Um, the Battle Pass cosmetic. Now I have 
since the beginning and i still get comments to this day of people saying dm can you tell them the battle pass cosmetic should be shared between classes yes and actually i've told them that literally dozens of times uh in meetings and feedback written out in every way that i possibly have uh and it's not just me i've actually actively seen other creators ask for the same thing multiple other creators have asked for the same thing we are getting them to address that issue which is what's going to be happening here so let's start from the top and Empowered and Collector's Battle Pass Reward Increase. The rewards received from the Empowered Battle Pass are changing to provide players with increased earnings and choice. We've adjusted what's provided for several Battle Pass ranks. So at rank uh, 5 and 35, you now get three normal gems each. Thank you. The one-star legendary gem, The Awakening, which isn't very good, has been removed from 520 and 35 and has been replaced by a two-star at rank 20. So this is effectively a one gym powder buff. It's replaced by one two star gym, not three. So this isn't going to 12 total uh, gym powder from three. It's going to four from three. So it is a 33% buff if you're just using these as father. Otherwise, this does help you focus down the Fervin Fang two star legendary gym at a higher rate. So that is factually an improvement, even though not a major one. Um, if we look here, Owners of the collected and battle, uh, collectors and power battle pass will now begin to earn archive coins as they rank up each season. So we're going to collect these new co coin co uh, cosmetic currency, basically. It can be earned to rank 1, 10, 20, 30, and 40. So we effectively get five of them about pass. So these can be exchanged for legendary gems, armor cosmetics, and portal cosmetics and more from previous battle pass seasons in the new battle archive shop so the way they're basically doing this is i was mostly worried uh that their explanation for why they're not making battle pass cosmetics uh, cross class because they didn't resell them is that they were worried that if they do that there's so many cross class skins that and this is me speculating they didn't say this is that there's so many cross class skins people would stop purchasing the newer skins as often as they're changing classes because i know myself as is somebody who spent money on cosmetics and i like cosmetics a lot if i if i change class i'm often incentivized to buy a new cosmetic because i don't have one for the class i changed to and so i was worried that that is probably going to be their logic to not do this well it looks like they found a middle ground that effectively makes it where if you own the battle pass you gain these coins and after you hit rank 40 the players now have an opportunity to use these coins to purchase the season cosmetic for other classes so these are free coins in terms of if you've already are purchasing the collector's battle pass it doesn't cost any more however these coins are only earned from the collector's empowered battle pass so it is a paywall in terms of getting these cosmetics to your other classes. Now, it has already been a paywall just to get the cosmetic, but specifically this one is for the collector's empowered battle pass. So if you're only buying the bare minimum battle pass, you will need to buy the more expensive version of the battle pass in order to unlock this. This is the way I am reading it. Let us continue. The items in the archive shop will rotate each season, so be sure to check back often. Battle pa uh, Pass Archive tokens do not expire and can be exchanged during any Battle Pass season. Players can be upgraded from the Empowered Battle Pass to the Collectors at any time. If they do, any newly unlocked rank rewards will be automatically rewarded to the player. So this is effectively, they'll retcon your progress for you if you decide to upgrade. Upon purchase of the Collectors Battle Pass, all players on the account of the same server will receive a portrait fame Portal Cosmetic and 10 Battle Pass ranks for that respective Battle Pass. This was already in the game. This is the reason to get the collectors, mostly for the Portal Cosmetic right here. So this is, they're explaining you what you're already going to get. This is not additional value added. The value is only in this shop, which will allow you to get cosmetics, I'm assuming either of other Battle uh, Passes, as well as the current one for the other classes. And that is their way of essentially monetizing while not monetizing. They're monetizing it, but within the same way they've already monetized it in order to get these skins. So this is sort of their answer to this. And we can now officially get these Battle Pass skins on other classes. It just takes a little bit extra work, okay? They don't say anywhere in here that there's a way to purchase these tokens outside of literally just doing the Battle Pass. So I am assuming 
this is it basically just go well for tokens and then take the tokens and buy all the cosmetics i don't think they're just opening up another shop you just earn these over time with the battle pass that you are purchasing with the collector's one now let's move on here to the activity calendar and schedule I'm not really going to go over all of this. This is a quality of life change. Um, effectively, they're just clearing out the ones that are already dead. Uh, you can see here, two hours after they've begun, it's removed. It's more rarely displayed. Activities listed. Now of reward preview. No big deal. This is kind of a nice change for Barbarian. The new pants shook the screen a lot. I think it was Lita that did the video on this. I experienced this issue as well. Um, this was very notable in the Fractured Plains if you got stuck with these pants. And they are sort of reverting the visual effects. Now, if you look here, Shady Stock Limited Time Event, this is going to be another event. If you actually look at it, it just says earn tokens. It'll give you exchanges for legendary items who rewards you with a random set item. This is a, effectively another event. So this is another of the events we've already seen a million times. And then we have the Season 12 Battle Pass Cosmetic, some red gold, maybe... Um, a, you know, it looks like Japanese uh, influenced a little bit there. And then here you say Bow Pass hosts 40 ranks of challenges, uh, rewards, gems, crests, etc. So this is all the same stuff you already expect. It's just another Bow Pass. And with the start of the Bow Pass, we should be getting these tokens. And then we have the Into the Darkwood Limited Time event. Pretty good looking cosmetic there. Actually, she looks like she's jumping a little weird on. It looks like she's, uh, what's that activity where you have to jump over the, the hurdle? She's doing the hurdles, okay. And once more, we can see the rewards for this event. It's another one of these events, random legendary, one pearl, three rare crests, one legendary. I still firmly believe these need to be buffed by at least double, at a minimum double, but each one of these events should give you four pearls. That's my take on these. And if we go to the bug fixes to see if there's anything new in terms of bug fixes, you can see April 4th was the last one where they fixed uh, the hungry move blessing would be removed after entering Elder Rift, gameplay issue about the Dread Reaver dungeon, and then some UI issues. And that pretty much wraps up the patch. So if you want the TO, the are too long didn't watch you skip to the end or something like that battle pass cosmetics it looks like you're going to be available on multiple classes through the collector's version of the empowered battle pass okay highly notable uh most importantly matchmaking resolutions for pvp this has been a major issue and hopefully they're going to take resonance into account try to even out the resonance on both teams that's what i'm assuming it is that's what i'm thinking it looks like and i'm assuming going forward we will test this as soon as we get into the game other than that we have the paragon points are now 100 percent usable at any time and we have a kitty cat that is harassing us in the morning so that's pretty much a wrap up it is in fact a minor patch but i like to see that the minor patch was more or less all targeted exactly at changes we didn't like like the leaving the clan thing instantaneously etc so they are focusing this entire patch was basically focusing uh, directly on player sent feedback, partner sent feedback, you know, everyone. It did, all of these changes were stuff that the general populace has been telling them. So that's a W, in my opinion. Love you all. See you on the next video.